Welcome to the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. I'm your host, Robin L. Owens, PhD. And this is where we dive in each week to give advice, tools, and tips for high achieving women leaders. And we talk about leadership purpose and its importance for you. I am a college professor, and when I am not doing that, I am speaking, writing, coaching, mentoring, and teaching high achieving women leaders how to find, and not only find, but how to stay in alignment with their leadership purpose so they can make a meaningful difference right there in their career, leadership, or business. Okay, let's dive in. Hi, everybody. It is Robin Owens, and I'm here today with Jennifer Darling. Let me tell you a little bit about Jennifer. Jennifer Darling is a revenue-generating machine. She has the unique ability to uncover complex business problems and turn them into money-making opportunities. Wow. She helps audience and clients get out of their comfort zones that can hinder their success. She teaches them to engage innovatively, connect more effectively, and increase their online visibility in new and valuable ways. Ways that lead to more customers, referrals, productivity, and profitability. Wow. And all while adding a healthy dose of witty humor. That I can attest to. (laughs) With over 20 years experience in advertising sales and sales management for companies such as Fox, NBC, CBS, and Comcast, she knows what works and what doesn't to boost sales. Even in the most challenging times, she led her team to record-breaking results. She's the author of the highly sought-after book, Increase Your Leads with LinkedIn, 52 Tips for Sales Success. Jennifer helps business professionals tackle social media with simple, stress-free strategies. She delivers keynotes, seminars, workshops, and virtual training on topics, LinkedIn, leadership, sales, and change. And from my experience with her, she is absolutely amazing. Welcome, Jennifer Darling. Oh, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here with you, Robin. (laughs) It's so good to be here with you. All right. So now I I know I I gave that kind of formal introduction slash bio for you, but why don't you just tell our listeners a little more about who you are and what you do from your point? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I'm the gal who grew up in a little bitty small town in southwestern Michigan and put myself through college and got my first job all on my own and uh, started in the advertising industry. And thankfully, that's what I started in because it just naturally suited my personality. And I did that climbing, climbing, climbing for about 20 years. And I found myself in a place where I just wasn't feeling really fulfilled anymore. Like I I was making every budget. I was making all, all the money in a corporate job. I was getting raises doing all the things that you would equal success, high achieving performer, but I just was not feeling very fulfilled. And so I spent several of my last years really trying to find something. And I would call it words like your word purpose. I'd look for my purpose. I'd look for my why. I would be looking, looking, looking. I bought, I had bought every book under the sun trying to find it. And I just was left empty. And so eventually, I just decided to make a job in career change uh, to try to find something else. And so I started my own business as a speaker and trainer, and that didn't quite do it either. Like for a while, it sparked my energy, and it was new and exciting, and you know, it was a challenge I had to solve and all that. But eventually, I got to a place where I was not fulfilled, <laughs> not happy. And all that same thing too. So I finally started really getting serious about taking a look at myself and my inner world and and what was important to me. And then really that direction changed when I got really into looking at myself and not the job or the work that I was doing as my purpose. Yes, that makes a lot of sense to me. When you began to look at yourself rather than the Mm -hmm. outcome. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Yeah. Then what happened was I actually, there was a really, you know, sometimes there's just like a pivotal moment and it doesn't always, it's not always super present. A lot of things happen a little bit over time, but this in particular moment, I can remember 
I had quit my job, started my own business. And about five months later, my husband got laid off from his job. So we were like, oh, no, we were not expecting that. Eventually, what happened several months later is we lost our house. My husband was pretty depressed because he was um, not working. I was a starving artist (laughs) or entrepreneur. And my brother had a heart attack. He's like in his 40s, like all this stuff. It within four months is rolling downhill. And we sold our house. We moved into like a temporary, like a rental house. And I was noticing that this old friend of mine was walking by my house. I didn't even know she lived in the neighborhood where I rented. And she was walking her Yorkie. And I thought, oh my gosh, here's somebody, a friend of mine in the neighborhood. I need to start exercising. I'm going to call her and I'm going to walk my Yorkie with her Yorkie. So we started walking every morning. And after a couple of weeks, I realized that every morning we took a walk, And every morning I was complaining and every morning I was complaining about the same problems with different words every day. And I started to get tired of listening to myself complain. I was like, I sound like a broken record. It's the same thing over and over and over, just in different words. And I was talking with her about this coaching program because I had been thinking about possibly getting certified as a coach to go along with my my consulting business and sales and marketing. And she told me about this program that was based on ontology. And I'm like, what does that mean? I never heard of that word before. I have no idea what that is. And she said, it's based on the way you're being. And I was like, sign me up because I am not being me. This is a complainer person for 14 days in a row or whatever. That's not really who I am. But that is how I'm showing up even to myself. So I did. I signed up for the first uh, like four day seminar of this and it blew my mind. It really got me taking a look at what was important to me. So I always struggle with like the words purpose and finding your why. And a lot of people my age, they have kids. And so their why is their kids, but I don't have kids. I have dogs. They're my why, but it's just not the same. And so I went to this first training and was unveiled a list called Life's Intentions. And it was a list of like 20 things you could choose from that were things that were important to you. And they were things like being an adventurer, being spiritually developing, being a successful entrepreneur. And when I looked at this list, it just was positioned me a different way than the other terms I'd been searching for. And I went, huh. Being an adventurer is very important to me. Am I being one right now? No. But am I willing to be one? And what does that mean? And what does that look like? So how do I take the concept from my mind to actually implementing it and demonstrating that I'm being that? And I may set a goal towards that. And it was no work goal, right? It wasn't like a work goal that I, that's all I had done for 20 years. It was a goal to be an adventurer. And so I made the goal to go climb a waterfall in Northern California where I live. And I set a date and I set a time and my husband and I went out and climbed this water. We went and played in this waterfall and I took a picture of it. It Just so fun, great memory. And that's when I realized that there are things that are very important to me that were just positioned in a different way and I needed to see them. And I needed to be the person showing up being that person that I chose and not being that person who was complaining. And and so the fulfillment has just, you know, totally changed. I see it in a totally different way. Uh, I love that because you shifted from this focus on the outward things outward into who you wanted to be. And what is impressive to me is that you immediately, like as soon as it occurred to you, this is the thing for me, you made the switch and you're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to follow this way of doing things. Yes. And it doesn't uh, mean that I'm always doing that, but there was, there was a key phrase in there, Robin, which is I am willing. So I wasn't being an adventurer, but I was willing to be an adventurer. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. That's awesome. Willing. Yeah. I am willing. willing to be willing. I am willing. That's a powerful phrase. Yeah. Sometimes it's like you might not be doing something, but if you're willing to do it, if you're willing to try it and test it, that's the thing you need to get there. You don't need to be perfect at it. Or I'm not, I didn't say I'm going to be perfect at doing this thing. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. And it opens us up. I think once we 
make that decision to be willing. Mm-hmm. It opens yes. up to open to do it and then to follow through on taking the steps to do it. Yep. Yeah. So we, now that you, you were in your being and you were willing to do some of the things that were more, I uh, use the word, in alignment with what, who you want to be, what happened in your career life, if any? Well, that's, yeah, it shows up everywhere. Like, I just led this three-day retreat, and you were there, thankfully. Yeah. And it was a retreat about how to use LinkedIn to grow your business. But it was really more than that, because there are things that will hold people back, like sharing their content and their ideas and their opinions. That will hold a lot of people back because they have fear of judgment and fear of criticism. And what I did the last day of that retreat, and it just happened naturally, I didn't plan for it, but this woman showed up and said, I am really having, I'm having a lot of fear around scarcity right now. And I said, really? I said, well, why don't we talk about that a little bit more? And she's like, oh, it's not on the topic. I said, but it is on the topic because scarcity mindset is what keeps a lot of people from showing up as leaders online and especially women. And we need more women leaders online, especially platforms like LinkedIn. That's a business platform. So let's talk about it. And that conversation started a little spark and tons of people came forward and shared their own contribution to that conversation and ended up being a 90 minute conversation about what was really truly holding people back from being thought leaders and showing up in the world. Mm. So my my willing to be a successful coach. That was one of the other. So I had like five different ways of being things that life's intentions that I was focused on willing to be a successful coach showed up in me totally allowing the agenda to be flexible and allowing people to show up and really holding the space they say for that conversation that really is truly meaningful to LinkedIn and how you show up in the world. And it just shows up in so many other ways. And if I'm stuck, because I get stuck all the time, my mind goes bonkers. I get uncomfortable. Um, I'm constantly leveling up. That's very uncomfortable, can be tough. And then I have to sit back and think about, okay, well, who am I willing to be in order for me to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So it's still a guide in your work today. What would you say uh, to people who are hearing you for the first time, generally the, the work you do and what you enjoy most about it? Yeah, I would say, especially to those people who are struggling to find their purpose, well, first they should continue to listen to your podcast <laughs> because that's all that's your main platform. And, and I'm so honored to be here to support that message because, you know, for me, this was I, I struggled for over 40 years, finding my why, finding my purpose, doing this and this and this. So if you're having a hard time, like you're still struggling with that, it may be that you need to just look for it under a different definition. Mm-hmm. What else does that mean? And for me, it was life's intentions that really went, aha. So don't stop looking. Don't give up. Keep going and stop. So don't stop looking, but stop working so hard at it. Mm-hmm. Because if you slow down, And really take a good inventory of what is really most meaningful to you in your life. It will become present, Mm. but it may not be the thing that your brain has been telling you is the most meaningful. So for me, it was that job and the promotions and this and that and the other. Well, but why did I want those things? Well, I would want those things because I want to travel. I want to give back to my family or my community. Like the why past the thing that you're thinking about. Go further and and be okay with not being in action. I'm always an action person. I got to be action. I got to do something, do something, do something. But this year alone, I took four months off to just be in the moment. And I never in my life did that before. My, my one coach, she called it cocooning. That was a, a term she had learned from somebody else. But cocooning, instead of being in action or planning. It's just being, sitting in the space, which is an action. It's just not the kind of action that we define it by, but being in action and just observing and seeing what's going on around you and what's important is super powerful. It's very uncomfortable if you've never done it, but it's really powerful. And just give yourself that time to do that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It is a very powerful action. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've had that experience in my own life. You know, I am a doer, but I'm also a beer. <laughs> and so sometimes I have to remind myself to set aside time in that in that way. Prolonged yeah. periods of time. Yeah. So Yeah, and I think as our society, our culture in Northern America, that includes Canada, you know, we are just we are action oriented, we're beers, we're doers, we're that's just our culture is to always be working and doing. And that's fine. And at the same time, we need to pause. Yes. Pause. Okay. So now that's, that's very helpful to people who are listening now. Is there anything else that you would offer as suggestion, helpful hint, advice from your experience for high achieving women? We have one um, pause and take some time out. Is there something else you'd like to offer? If not, it's okay. Yes. In fact, I was just listening to this great talk by, um, well, the name will come back to me in a moment. Anyways, a famous artist, uh, author, and he was talking about being open to your thoughts. And what that meant was the way we've grown up, we all have biases and ways of thinking, and we don't even think about our ways of thinking often. And so when somebody brings something to you and you're so uh, determined that you know the right answer, really to stop and, and ask your questions to yourself is, is the way I've seen this still the way I want to see this? Or is there other, are there other variables or other things I need to take a look at? Now, don't do this by wasting time on things that are not meaningful, like what am I going to wear today? Do do this when they're on meaningful topics. So what we typically do is we're wasting our time on not meaningful topics. What are we going to wear today? And then we're just making our quick decisions on very meaningful topics. And there are so many meaningful topics and conversations happening today that really, and this isn't even my advice. It's advice I got from this author. Hopefully I think of his name in a minute here. Very popular. But it's really to take a close look at what your thoughts are about very important subjects and question your own thoughts. Because you may find that your own questioning allows you to see a different angle of something you have were so confirmed your thought about that was right when there might be some new things to take a look at and really consider. We're dealing with some tough topics today. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in our, in our world. And we need to really sit back and think of what else is there for me to see? Yeah. It's a good prompt for reflection to ask yourself the question. Yeah, and it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to change your opinion because you have new information. You have new ways of looking at it. And I really loved that conversation because I stopped to think about, oh my gosh, what are the things that I'm just going through every day making opinions about? And I really need to stop and think about this from different angles. So even for high achievers, because we're so driven towards the finish line, the goal line that sometimes you can put your blinders on the side and not see your blind spots or what's going on around you because you're so driven to get to the target. And then you don't stop and celebrate and you get to the next target. Oh, I'm totally guilty of that. Like there's no celebration because once I'm done, I'm on to the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I never stop to look around or smell the roses or do any of that, do any of those <laughs> kinds of things that you've heard about. Smell the roses. Like what? I got to be on to the next project. Well, that doesn't really help you fulfill your soul. And if you're not fulfilling your soul, then what's all this stuff good for anyway? Yeah. Yeah. And I know you were saying a little bit earlier, you were, different language spoke to you when you were at that point of um, being unfulfilled in your work. And I I call this podcast Leadership Purpose. And I make a distinction between purpose because I found there is a distinction for me. When I say leadership purpose, I mean how you express who you are. Because for me, that's what your purpose is, is to express who you are. And it sounds very abstract, but how you express that through your leadership, through your role, whether it's an official leadership role or not. And so that's why I make the distinction about leadership Mm -hmm. purpose and living your life through your business career or leadership role. So that's the way I think about it. And I know you've thought about purpose in the past and the the term being worked better for you. But now um, that you hear this term leadership purpose, what pops in your mind right now? Yeah, well, what pops in my mind is that I didn't know who I was and how that came 
about or, or to expand on that is that I knew who I didn't want to be. I knew what I didn't want to do. I knew what I didn't want. I knew all the didn'ts, shouldn'ts, couldn'ts, wouldn'ts, but I didn't know what I wanted. It was very interesting because I remember talking to a friend of mine. She's like, well, I've heard all about the things you don't want. What do you want? And I'm like, I have no idea. So how could I really lead with purpose when I didn't know what I did want? I only knew what I didn't want. And so when you're only focused on what you don't want, what you attract more of is what you're focused on. I was in leadership role. I mean, I believe everyone is in leadership roles. And whether it's a leadership role, like you're a manager at a corporation or a company, or you're a business owner, or you are an employee on the front line, and you're leading by your voice, right? All of those are powerful leadership roles. And if you go outside of your work, you're a leader in your home, your community. I am a dog mom. I'm a leader of my pack. (laughs) (laughs) You know, your hat as leader expands so far beyond your work and your job. But in your work and your job, if you don't know who you are and what you want, how are you going to lead other people to support them and who they are and what they want? But it's not bad not to know who you are and what you want. It just means that you need to be open to the search for that because I was open to the search. I didn't get my answers for a long time. I struggled wanting the answer, right? But I had to live through all of that to be where I am now. Like I couldn't have gotten there earlier. Yeah. And, it just didn't exist. And thank God you're here because it brought us together. Exactly. This path that you're on. Yes. It may not have you're, happened before. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. So I see the leadership purpose. And, and then I think before you actually get to the really deep, deep parts of who you are and your purpose and all that, like if you're still looking for that deep part, keep searching. But you could start with what are your values? What's really meaningful to you? What are you not willing to negotiate? What are the non-negotiables? So I was working for a corporation and I had before I had worked with a, a different business coach and she talked about your values and writing them out. So it wasn't enough to have them in your brain, but put them on paper. And I put down a set of values and there were seven things I put down that were non-negotiables. And one of those was integrity. And I got asked to do something at my job by my managers that I did not agree with. And so I literally went back and I said, I don't agree with this. And, you know, I can't do this. You're asking me to push beyond what I feel is out of my own integrity. And that's a very strong value for me. And I literally was willing to let the job go because it was, if it was an either or, either the job or my risk, my integrity, I was not willing to risk my integrity. I wasn't willing to, that was non-negotiable. Eventually, I did leave the job because our values weren't aligned, right? right? And a lot of people would stay right? because they have to have the money, this and that. I totally get that. I needed the money. Like when I left, I didn't have any money. It was very scary, but I also couldn't sleep at night if I was not in in line with my values. Yes. Yes. And I could relate to that quite a bit because of course it relates to my own work. And that's the the work that I do help people come to that when I say uh, leadership purpose. It does include your values coming, understanding, identifying your values and also your passions and also what you're good at, what some people might call your zone of genius, what I call your natural abilities or gifts and in service to something other than yourself. And when you have those components together, then we we come to a process where we can then find how you can express some of that through the work you do, Not, not to counter. Uh, Mm -hmm. things that aren't going on, but to bring you to that fulfillment to move forward. Yeah. And I think uh, the the gifts, your natural gifts and your zone of genius, when you are in a, I don't know what I want phase, it's really hard to see your own genius zones. And I think a lot for women, we have kind of become, we suppress some of those things like bragging. You know, somebody said to me yesterday, I don't mean to brag, but I said, oh no, bragging is welcome here. I want to hear the good things about you. I want to hear what you, because you have actually something to say. A lot of people will suppress those. And that's so not, so not good. Like we all are, God has given us all gifts. Yeah. Yeah. All of us. And it is a okay to celebrate those gifts. Yeah. I'm not saying you need to be egotistical about it, but 
work in your zone of genius. Celebrate it. I get more posts and comments when I celebrate things on social media than when I talk about business. Mm -hmm. And then I think the third thing that, that you said was celebrating and, you know, really leaning into connecting with a higher purpose. And for me, like that, that connection was not tight or strong and it was on and off, on and off, on and off. And then I've been reading this book recently called The Science of Getting Rich. It's a book written in like 1910. And the thing I read over and over in this book is about being grateful and giving thanks to the things that you have and doing that every day, not just when you're feeling bad or whatever, but doing it every day. So when I had my retreat, I I gave thanks for every person that signed up. I, I gave thanks before the retreat. Uh, the day before the retreat started, I gave thanks after the retreat started. I gave thanks last night for the retreat. Like, it's just like giving thanks and being grateful for every little thing that you have, because every little thing is really a big thing. It's all those things made up that you, 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 so you've given gifts and you, who you are, and you're given gifts in many other ways as well. Yes. Yes. I agree wholeheartedly. And um, I am grateful for you here today, since we're thinking about gratitude right now. And so I'm sure people who are listening are being inspired by your story and your journey and what you've come through and the pearls of wisdom that you've dropped so far. Now, if they want to continue hearing more about what you do, or they want to be in touch with you, how can they do that? The best way to contact me and connect with me is on LinkedIn, because that's my primary place I hang out in social media. I'm on Facebook, yeah, but I'm not there as much anymore. I really find LinkedIn is kind of my jam. It's more businessy and and I like to hang out there. Plus, I'm trying to put a little spark of lifestyle and fun into LinkedIn so I could use an an army to come and support me in that too. LinkedIn.com slash IN slash Jennifer Darling Speaks. There's another Jennifer Darling who owns just a Jennifer Darling URL. I can't get her, you know, I haven't been able to get the price out of her yet, what she wants to sell it to me for. (laughs) So I have Jennifer Darling Speaks. You'll find me have red glasses. My profile's about sales because I do sales and marketing. So connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you mention that you heard me here on Robin's show and you want a little help with LinkedIn, I'll even send you my free LinkedIn checklist to help you with with that too. And Uh give you a little bonus for supporting Robin's podcast. Well, thank you, Jennifer. That's a a generous offer. And thank you for your time here. I know you're very busy and to take time out of your day and schedule to share with all those who are listening. I really appreciate you and the work you're doing. Absolutely. Anything you ask, you get, Robin. (laughs) <laughs> I feel honored. Okay, everybody, you heard that. I have witnesses, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye now. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Leadership Purpose with Robin podcast. If you enjoyed it, head on over and rate and subscribe so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week, and I can't wait to hang out with you again soon. Meanwhile, this is Robin signing off. See you next time.